Well, welcome back to another episode of the Stay Focused Podcast. Man, it is it's just an honor and just a privilege to just keep going on this thing. We've been having such a great time and what such great feedback from all of you guys who are watching this and supporting us. Uh, it, it doesn't surprise me. Every, well, it is actually a surprise. Every time I talk to somebody, they're telling me that I'm watching this podcast and what it's doing for them. And so that is kind of the purpose why we started this. And it's just an honor that it is working and glad to be back once again. So how are you feeling about the whole thing, man? Great. Yep. Loving it. Yep. Yeah. Very, glad, very, to, glad to be uh, doing some more of these and kicking out some podcasts. Yep. Yeah. Very good timing. Um, for those that don't know and you're kind of getting with us for the first time, my name is Artie Delgado. I'm a cinematographer, a steady can operator, director, and uh, producer. And right beside me is Jordan Keith, my right-hand guy uh, for the Brink Film team. And we are just gathering together, talking shop, I guess you'd say, talking yeah. shop, and also just kind of talking about our experiences. Mm. This is not really meant for us to tell it, you the way it's supposed to be. This is about giving you the experiences that we've had, and hopefully you can gain from that as well and, and be able yeah. to get good, good experiences as you are learning as a filmmaker and really as an artist altogether. I think mm. this is supposed to be... Uh, an artistic world. You're an artist. Yeah. I'm an artist. Everyone around us are artists. And um, we want to encourage those that aren't even doing it in the film industry, but anyone in some kind of art creative right. to be involved in that. So hopefully this has been helpful. But uh, to get to what we're going to be talking about today, we have a lot to talk about. So little time. Mm. Um, today, a lot of people have been asking really about what kind of equipment we use, yeah. mainly cameras. Yeah. And so to getting into that, we've been busy. We'll get into that a little bit longer, but we've been kind of busy doing some things lately. Yeah. What have we been doing? What are some things we've been we've been involved in lately? Uh, we just got to partner with uh, our boy, John Jacobs. Yeah. Uh, yep. Super close friend, really awesome cinematographer, um, doing some of his solo stuff, but he's killing it, man. It seems like he has... Uh, a big crew, but a lot of times he's just doing it solo, but yep. he's doing it so good. And, and I know uh, that world. I know that oh, world yeah. where you do solo for the long time. And, yeah. Um, so yeah, we did get a chance to do a music video with him. We did. Uh, we shot that on location over actually at uh, at Pro's yeah. place. Shout out. And so that was really good to be able to use his place. And again, networking. Oh yeah. Right. We're keeping it all in house. Yeah. This is all about what we've been doing is networking with each other. Yeah. And uh, we've had Pro on here a few weeks ago yeah and that's been great just to talk about business versus the artistry so right. that was nice to be able to use his place and we got a chance to use car rigs we were able to try a little of that yeah uh, we had even john hanging out the back of my truck even at doing some of the shots out of that with his ronin right with his ronin yeah, yeah, yeah. got a little of that and then we were able to use the red and we shot um we shot inside the studio so we were using a lot of the schneider uh filters yeah, the, oh yeah Really looked really nice, and we got uh, the artist himself brought in all his people to come play as the fans and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So that was a, a really good experience and a lot of fun. So I can't blessed. wait to see him put that together. So that was a real honor to be part of that. So yeah. we've been busy doing a lot of things. We've been traveling a little bit too. Mm -hmm. But the big question really, I think a lot of people, what we've been getting back has been what kind of cameras are we using? And what I like to call is camera jewelry. Yeah. All right, just like everyone's slanging their jewelry, we're slanging our cameras, right? Yeah. So, um, we have been asked this a lot, like mm -hmm. what cameras are we using? Why are we choosing to use that? Where did we start from? Because I know I have a lot of people starting out and where, where do I start from? Where do I go when right. I first get my camera? But a little history to go back to my first camera yeah. and how I, that even came to be, uh, people have been asking. So I want to give a little history on where I came from. Uh, just like you, I think, we started back doing the DVD, D, DVDs, DV cameras. Yeah, That's where I kind of started in mine about tape. nine years ago using tape. Mm -hmm. And um, so I started many, many years ago and using that, and that was a whole different the ball game. This oh, is yeah. why today with the digital world so that we got into, now. yep, very, very easy and yeah. what a luxury it has been. Uh, but we come from the tape world. So yeah. I was using DV tapes for a while. Uh, when I first got my first camera, I was using a, it was actually a, a JVC. Yeah, me too. 100U, the big camera. Yeah, yeah. And it was an oversized. And what was really great about this camera, which I, when I first got it, it made me feel like I was official. Oh, yeah. It, looked, it, was, it looked official. It looked official. Yeah. I mean, it looked like a broadcast camera. Oh, yeah. It was over the shoulder. Right, right. Right. And it was huge. And wherever I went... I got nothing but respect wherever yeah. I went because it was so huge. Right. Uh, and I thought I was like, I made it. Like I was yeah, able yeah. to do that. Um, and so when I got my first camera, uh, before I was always borrowing friends and whatnot, I actually had to, okay, how was I going to do this? I needed to get in I needed to invest. That's what I thought. I felt, okay, I'm doing enough with borrowing my friends. I'm able to get a few uh, projects here and there, right. but I needed to invest in mine. And so my back in the day, my parents loaned me a thousand bucks. Dang. I put in the rest. They loaned me a thousand bucks just to get it started. 
And uh, I was able to do that. And I think I raised the money back in the first month. I mean, I raised it back right away. So it was like, oh, I was guaranteed to know that I was gonna make that money back. Right. That's what was the push to say, I need to invest in this. And I it was able to get that camera and I went to work, man. I shot anybody and everybody's mm-hmm. everything. And so that was my first camera. And as I got into that, that's when the digital world started. Yeah. Uh, I still went into the, the, the P2 camera. That was a yeah. Panasonic P2, which was digital yeah. at that point. It was the first, I guess you'd say, digital read card. Yeah. It, had, it had flash drives in right. it. And that was a night and day transition for me. And so I went from the original Panasonic, which was DV tape, into oh, okay. the P2. Gotcha. And that's when it trans- transitioned into digital, yeah. digital tape. Crazy. So that was my second camera. Started to invest in that, and that was a night and day camera upgrade for me oh yeah yeah that was huge uh and i think you were using a lot of that p2 when you were skating correct i did yeah, yeah. i started on the uh sony vx 1000 which was uh mini dv tape and that was actually still funny enough they actually still use it in that world in the skate world mm-hmm. it's nostalgic i guess but uh had that for a while and then i moved to the p2 for a little bit yep and then i moved to uh, a 7d so i 7D. moved to the dslr which and, i know you did also. and that's exactly where i was yeah. going next and yeah. that's when that transition into the digital world mm-hmm. really took off when to find out that you can get it into a dslr yeah. um was the 7d and that mm-hmm. was my first camera that i was then able to say i'm going to invest in this route right and i rigged the thing up i mean i had it i was rigging it up any way i could uh, with even the follow focus stuff for it, oh, everything nice. meant for I the. Know that. Yeah, they made follow focus specifically for the 7D and shoulder rigs and the whole deal. And so right. I, I really made everything with that 7D. And so, um, that was a great camera. I, oh, I, yeah. I would say that was probably the real, uh, the real transition for me as a filmmaker. I was able to really see images like I'd never seen it before. Sure. It got me excited in a way that got me pumped up to do more and more. Yeah. Uh, it, it really made me the filmmaker start out transition for me into a filmmaker that I am today. Yeah. So that I had for a few years. I mean, that was probably the me longest time. I, I used that for quite a while. And I did everything with that camera. And then uh, what was my next camera? I moved up from that 7D because I wanted full frame at that yeah. point. Yeah. So then I got into the Canon Mark II. Mm-hmm. And that's when I was able to go full frame. And that was a luxury to be able to have more of that more uh, better settings, shooting in a 1080, being able to do a little 60 frames, a little slow-mo, oh, yeah. that kind of thing. So yeah. that was able to go that route. Then I moved from the Mark II to the Mark III because they just kept getting bigger and better. They kept... Uh, well, you, you did 5D, right? The 5D. Yeah. 5D, okay, you went 5D 70, Mark II. 5D, yeah, yeah, all the 5Ds. It. So it went straight from 70, 5D, yeah. 5D Mark II, right. 5D Mark III. Right. And uh, that was that DSLR world that I went to constant and stayed there for a number of years. And... Uh, did a lot of music videos, did a lot of uh, doc pieces. And yeah, yeah. Won a few awards with that that piece. In fact, I was, at some point, I was actually getting so good with my color on that that people thought I, at that point, at some point, thought I was using much higher end cameras uh, because the color, okay. when I was at the film festival, they were like, what, uh, what were you using? And I would tell them and they were like, how are you using, that's a right. DSLR. And it wasn't as popular as it is today. Yeah. And I was able to make it work. And the color correction was what I really spent some time on. Mm in order to make it look like film. Made the difference. Made the difference, so yeah. that was the big big thing there. And then I went from the uh, the Mark III, and that's when I went into the Canon C100. Yeah. Uh, that was when they finally made the transition between DSLR cameras that were photo cameras first, yeah. that were able to do video, right. where they took the transition and said, we're gonna, we're gonna hear all you cinematographers out there, we're gonna hear all your complaints, we're gonna hear all your wishes, and we're going to make you kind of a camera that will do it all cinematically yeah. for yeah. you. And that's what the C100 was for us. And I got into the C100 and I have, to this day, still love this camera. That's great. This is a, a beautiful camera. It is a run and gun camera. Mm-hmm. The images out of it are fantastic. It has built-in filters. Um, the IP, the viewfinders are already built in. Yeah. The battery life on it is huge. The uh, two cards, two card slots that will last you. You know, the, the, the memory cards are getting bigger. We're getting yeah. bigger and bigger at the time, and so you can go do a documentary and be gone for a week and have tons of footage. Sure. Be able to without dumping. So that was huge for us, and um, that 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 right there was my camera, and that was my two go to camera for a long time. Yeah. And I think once you got hold of that camera too. Oh yeah. Game changer. Game changer, right? Absolutely. Tell me about the story about, uh, I think you were in college, I think you said, and originally when you got a chance to use it, you weren't really like, oh, oh yeah, I, didn't know. I don't really know how to use it, I'm yeah. not gonna use it. Oh yeah. Right? We went. We were primarily using uh, DSLRs, and I had my 7D, which back then was like really nice. I mean, it's still a nice camera, but um, that was like our main camera, and some guy said, hey, I have this C100, I didn't even hear about it before, and he brought it, and I was like, oh, it looks cool, it looks big, and I tried to use it, and I, all my images were flat, 
I didn't know how to, it was hard to navigate and stuff mm. like that. I had no idea. I, I didn't really spend the time. But then when we sat down, when you sat me down and we used it, oh man, it's, it's next level. I mean, the things you can do. It are, really goes down to really about the knowing what the camera can do oh, yeah. when you're really kind of educated about the product. Yeah. That makes all the difference when you don't really kind of know. That was what I'm going to lead into with the red stuff was when you kind of don't know all of it, yeah. it, it gets frustrating. Absolutely. And that was a prime example for you. Yeah, it was. And once you got to learn how to use it, you well, love that love camera. It now, yes. Love that we camera. We still right? use it. Yeah, still use it. So, yeah. um, and, and for anything, run and gun, documentary pieces, things that were going to be out for a while, out on the field, that's our go-to. Yeah, and, absolutely. And um, being that we do stuff at the church as well, being, uh, you know, that 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 keeps us going. We do long testimonies. We're never going to come back for uh, at the church for a while. It's, yeah. It's a great camera. Prime example, I'm going to Cambodia this year, yep. and that's going to be the camera I take. Because yep. I'm going to just be out. It's easy. It's light. Yeah. You know? I only wish I had that camera yeah, back right, then. Yeah, right, right, right. Because I didn't have that. Yeah. I took my 7D. And so, yeah, uh, yeah you're going you're gonna to love that, having able to have longer yeah, time, yeah. battery lives, and, and be good. So that's going to be, be awesome. exciting for you. Yeah. Uh, and then, so then we got into this, this, the, the 100. That was the C100 that lasted us great. And then um, there was a big transition that happened this last year, was to finally stepping it up into the red. Yeah. And for, for me personally, we, we jumped into the red Scarlet W. Mm-hmm. And it was finally time for me to look at this, 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 this history of going, what have I done with the cameras I've got have had? And how, you know, that was a big transition for me is how long have I lasted in these cameras? And for a while, I think I was getting a new camera every year. Oh, how funny. Literally every year. I was starting to look at my history and go, I'm getting a camera every year. Oh, I'm shoot. selling that. I'm getting another camera. So when the technology started to grow like that, it starts to go, how much do I invest in my next camera? Yeah, sure. Well, when I started to look into the second generation of the Reds, uh, that was when I started to think about longevity. How long will this, this new camera last me? How long will I invest into this? Will I be able to grow into it still in the next couple of years? And so those are all the questions I asked myself and I did and they still validated to go ahead and make that purchase. And last right. year we invested in getting this, the Red Scarlet W. And since then, it has been a learning curve for sure, oh, yeah. right? Learning yeah. curve to jump into the raw, learning into bigger files, learning into bigger battery, learning into just everything. But the imagery out of this camera is beautiful. You can't yeah. argue that. Yeah. And once you started to understand it, uh, I put myself through education yeah. at one point. Right. And it was coming back out of that whole thing to understand it a little bit better. Learning the settings, learning out the the blackouts on when you yeah. reset and re- right. when, you, when you do upgrades to the camera, you need to do the, uh, the blackout to it too. Yeah. All these things that I didn't know about yeah. to allow imagery to look really great, it was education right. that helped me get that. And once we did that, we started to get more comfortable with it. And then what happens? You get more confidence oh, yeah. with it. And so yeah. we are a lot more confident, definitely, with that now yeah. and, and loving it. And now uh, that's kind of the go-to as far as all our bigger projects right. and stuff. And that is where we are standing today. So the red uh, Scarlet W is where we're at and love it and glad I made that purchase and knowing that going into it a few years from now, we are still going to be okay. Oh, yeah. uh, the images that we're getting at it with the 5K is going to be just fine. Mm-hmm. And um, I find myself just loving some of, depending on the project, we are using it for what we need for each project. And right. that's important. And so being comfortable makes you confident. And yeah. that's one of the most important things. Because if you're going to feel confident with the gear that you're comfortable using, over some new camera because you feel like, oh, that's what everyone's using, you're better off using what you're more comfortable with. Sure. And in my experience, I'll take my, my most comfortable camera on any day shoot yeah, right. that, I'm, that I gotta really show what I can do. Well, at the beginning, even when we first got the Red, we didn't fully understand it, and yeah. so we were frustrated. Very frustrated. I mean, for a while. Yes. And then when, when, you, when you did Red Education, and yep. then when you spend more time with it, and even when we really got into color, yep, that was the next game changer for it. And yep. so it keeps developing, and. Yeah, I think that's huge to get to know your gear. Confidence yeah. with everything we do yeah. uh, is anything about a cinematographer. Yeah. The better you are confidently, and we will talk about that in a few episodes too, about uh, how confident we have gotten and why we've become that confident, either from our business to pricing and all that stuff. But a confident cinematographer is going to make you good at really what you need to be good at, which is the art of the shots, the right. art of the vision, um, the art of the ending product, and you're responsible for that as a cinematographer, yeah. right? Uh, so that's really huge. Um, so going into all the cameras, that's kind of been my history and leading uh, where, we, where we stand today. And um, people ask and have asked, you know, do we rent gear? Yeah. Do we buy gear? That's huge. And that's huge. And we had a uh, pro on here talking a little bit about that. But back to recap and leaning about whether I rent or buy and my experiences and what we do. What my personal uh, experiences on that is, 
I understand it when you got to rent gear. Hey, we are not all in a position to where you have all this gear. Absolutely. And renting, like Pro had said, was really a good idea for when you want to try new things out and you want to experiment with this right. lens and that. Sure. A new camera that you haven't used and experimenting because before you really make a big purchase like that, that's huge. But for me, myself, like I've done so much really research in a lot of my purchasing that by the time I'm ready to either rent them, I really know where I'm going with right. these. I've had enough right. chance to play with them beforehand. And for me, buying the product is the way to go for me. Uh, that's just a personal experience for me. Uh, and, and I have a lot of reasons behind that. One of my major reasons is, is I love to be able to have control. I'm kind of a control freak. And being able to have control means I own it. I have access to use it whenever I want. That means if you say, yo, let's go shoot this thing tonight because we have this opportunity to yada, yada, yada. Right. I'm grabbing my camera right now and I'm going. Yeah. I don't worry, you have to worry about going to pick one up, going if to have to have borrow, yeah. if they have it, and right, if there's right. missing parts, right. if there's anything like that. So, and the experience of knowing that for me, owning is the most abil uh, the best ability of me being able to have practice with my camera, yeah. playing with the settings, being able to, uh, and that's if you are going to do that when you get it, you gotta be able to use it, practice it, practice it, go shoot, bring it back, look at the footage, go shoot something out, yeah. else with a different setting, bring right. it back, put it in the editing program. Even if it's shooting your cat, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just I, use I, it. I tell people all the time, like, what have you shot lately? Well, I haven't, and you have a camera and you haven't shot with it, why? Yeah. I've had this happen all the time mm -hmm. and it's like, I don't get that because when I got myself a camera, all I wanted to do was just shoot my living room. Yeah. Go out and shoot the flowers, go and shoot my neighbors, cats, yeah. whatever. Shoot something, show the images, play with the process yeah. and you will learn what works and what doesn't. Oh, that was a little grainy. Oh, that was a little dark. Oh, this was not the right format to convert to. Oh, that, whatever. Those are the kind of things that I needed to learn and yeah. so you gotta keep doing that. So for me, owning the cameras is a big benefit to being able to do that. And I value that all. Now, of course, let's play the devil's advocate and go, I understand that not everyone's the ability of going, okay, I can't buy a red. Sure. Got that. I understand that world. And so you grow into these things. And that's what I'll tell you guys is that you got to grow into it. Be able to know what, what people have told me, like, I have a 7D, man. I'm looking at getting a better camera before I really, you know, start really oh, yeah, working. We hear, we hear this all the time. All the time. Yeah. Guys have cameras that I started with and I was making and winning awards for. Yeah. And they're talking about, I don't have the red, so I'm not, I'm not really out there doing yeah, it yet. Yeah. And that is so frustrating to right. hear because it, it's not about what you have. Yeah. It's about what you're experienced with and how confident you are with that project. Sure. Give me a 7D. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let me show you what I can do with right. a 7D. Right. Give me that 7D and I'll yeah. show you. Yeah. And so that's important for you guys out there that may feel that you're under the pressure because we understand, man, that you are always under the pressure of having the latest and greatest oh, thing. Every day there's something I else feel that, that pressure out. sometimes. Yeah, yeah I feel yeah. that pressure too. And so you're always under the gun about what everyone else is using. Meanwhile, you're letting time go by and you're not out there doing. Right. You got to be out there that doing. That mentality will change, you know, of, oh, I need a better camera because I'm not. That'll change once you start doing more things. Correct. Because then you realize, oh, shoot, I can actually do quite a bit. Totally. With this camera. Totally. Yeah. And, and so you got to be able to do that now. Don't wait. Yeah. Don't wait for the influence of what everyone else is shooting with. Yeah, now, yeah. hey, research what everyone else is using. Sure. Learn why they're using yeah. it. Do all that. But you got to be able to just say, I'm going to go out there and shoot with what I have yeah. and make with what it works. Even if you have, man, even if I, I was making motorcycle videos with those little Canon cyber shots, oh, those little man. handheld cyber shots. And oh, I was doing recap that's videos, crazy. I yes, didn't know that. cyber shots. And we were mounting them to our helmets. I was doing low mo shots. Is that before GoPros? Oh, it was, yes. It was when GoPro was kind of yeah, there, yeah. but GoPros were expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was using a cyber shot that it was 99 bucks or whatever. Crazy. I was using that to make videos, wow. making a name for myself using that. Yeah. And it wasn't about the quality necessarily. It's about what I was bringing to the sure. table, my storytelling, yeah. the images I was showing, right. not about the quality of yeah. it. So don't be influenced by what everyone else is doing. Educate yourself by what everybody else is doing, but don't stop. You gotta be out there and shoot with yep. what you have yep. and grow into it. Once yep. you let yourself outgrow your camera. Yeah, that's great. Right? Yeah, that's great. You gotta outgrow your camera before you step it up to the next sure. one. Sure. You have to say to yourself, and I've said this before, using every part of the buffalo, yeah. this means using every part of everything you do. This is the thing. Use every part of that camera before you can say I'm gonna upgrade. Right. And when you've out when you've outdone it, you're like, I've done everything I can on this. Now I need a full frame. I've done everything I can to this. I need 4K. Yeah. I've done everything I need to this. I need 8K. Yeah. This is where the level of going into that next level really can tell you, have you grown when you outdone everything on the last camera? Right. I don't know if that's helpful for most of you guys that are renting or wondering, hey, what camera should I get? Or I don't have the greatest camera right now. 
that is should be some good advice on what you guys need to be doing right now. Don't wait. Get out there and shoot and believe that you can do a lot of things with the, what they are offering now right. for very little money. Yeah. So that's huge. Yeah, I think that's that's huge. Um, that you really don't need the latest and greatest to to get work done and, and to really fill the shoes of that product that you're using already before you move on to the yep. next one. Yep. Yeah. So hope that's encouraging on that. Let's let's do this. I've got a couple of people that have asked on um, the filmmakers questions. They've been on IG. I've asked us yeah. a few questions. Yeah. And this is from Jam the Hype. Oh yeah. So good old Derek, Derek. Uh, a good friend of ours, a big supporter of Brink, yeah. uh, has had us come out before and put us on a platform to play some of our films. Yeah, conferences and conferences, stuff like that. Conferences, yeah. he's a big supporter, but also wants to know some questions. So yeah, cool. uh, Derek, thank you for supporting for all that you do, man. And you can find him at just at his name, Derek Huim. And he asks and says, um, what do you guys think about the indie film promotions? When you guys do your first full length movie, which I know you will guys soon, Okay, thanks, brother. Love it. Um, what is the best way an indie film can get noticed? So, very good question. And that's really a good thing. And now, marketing is one of the things that I love. Yeah. I'm actually passionate about marketing. I've been doing that since I was a hip-hop artist. Right. So, I love doing that. And so, one thing is about, I love getting things noticed. Things that we do, right? We love getting in front of people's audiences. Yeah. And what's the best way to get something like that shown? I mean, yeah. what, what we, in our experiences, what have you seen us do? I yeah. Mean, I think it's... Uh, we're in the best possible time right now for self-marketing. I mean, with Instagram and all of social, I was, you're probably your bread and butter for getting stuff out there. I mean, you know, networking's huge, already building that, you know, that connection with all the amounts of people that we talk to regularly right. to keep that up. But we do a lot of self, self-marketing, so throwing events ourselves, putting platforms, creating platforms ourselves. I mean, if you want to talk about some of those things. Yeah, that and, done and, and that's what I was going to lead to yeah. was, you know, in the past with doing some of the film festivals that I've done, uh, I've done the film festivals and they're great and I will continue doing those here yeah. and there. But one thing that I've realized is as much experience as we've been part of, as we've been doing, our my whole thing was, I want to be. I want to own everything. I want to do it ourselves. Yeah. I feel the experience that I've put in, under my belt is saying we don't need to do that. Obviously, we want to get exposure, but there are some things we can do in house. Sure. And some of those have been some of our premieres. Yeah. And what I would definitely say that for the next time we do another project for us, we've been in the habit of our second year already. I want to be able to do my own premiere again. Yeah. And this allows us to be able to platform two things: not only our product, but it also allows us to promote what we believe in sure so it gets to put a platform on all our team plus yeah. the what we the project itself but then we also have other things that we are passionate yeah, about partnering with people partnering and, with people yeah. that is huge for me yeah. and when you do a film festival you're kind of just out there looking on your own for me and this is just to get again my experience yeah, yeah, yeah it's all about you're trying to show people what you have done and there's no ability for me to be able to team up with everybody because you're at the mercy of whatever they want to spin for me when we did our own premiere this was an opportunity to partner with other people raise money bring people on the vision of this ultimately the project we did but then we partner with the things that we believe in, which is dealing with stuff with urban cities, right. urban kids, yeah. um, you know, fatherless kids, things like that that we get to partner with. And that for me is all yeah. the big impact sure. for me. And sure. I want to have purpose behind everything we do. Once again, we talk Always. about that all the time. Yeah. And for me, that's one way to get an indie film out right. is to put it in front of an audience that not only is going to show our film, but it has purpose and behind our heart shows it. our heart shows mm. the heart. Yeah, yeah. I think that's in everything. We tell this all the time when we interview people, or we talk to people and we share, it's about, you can't lose when you're sharing your heart. Sure. And as long as we're doing that, I'm going to feel good about every project we yeah. take on. And yeah. uh, I want to continuously do that. And I, I think that's the only way I'm going to feel good about doing this longevity. You yeah. know, I don't think I'm going to feel good if I, if I'm doing things, doing things for a paycheck and I'm not really making a difference and making change. Yeah. And I think that if we make enough change, Income will come. I'm not worried about that. Sure. I think that'll eventually. I think that that goes for anybody. Yeah. Anybody who's making enough change, you're going to be okay. Yeah. I believe that. And so yeah. with doing an indie film, with what Derek is asking is saying, what's the best platform that we've had? You're right. Social media has obviously yeah, been. Yeah, huge. Um, with the Instagram is really one of our best uh, resources that we're using. And now with their new source that they've got, right? IGTV. IGTV is a new thing that they just started. And so we're definitely going to jump on that, yeah. allowing you up to use more than 15 minutes possibly, yeah, right? Yeah. And being able to show more of a platform. It's really a game changer, yeah, I think. definitely. Um, not to market them in any which way, but again, it's using it as a tool to put oh, yeah. the audience on what we do. Even these podcasts can now right. show longer versions of yeah. what we were doing and getting it front of our audience and showing it in front of our people and getting it accessible to them easily. Right. 
that's huge. Yeah. Um, and so even more than websites now. Yeah. You're able to go to this thing faster than that than right. getting on when to go to your website. Yeah. So I think that's huge. So I would say that's probably the biggest platform. I think a lot of it's staying up on it too. You know what I mean? Staying busy. I mean, we post Very something good. every day. I mean, whether it's, you know, just, hey, check out the merch and it's a picture of the merch or, hey, podcast coming up. It's just keeping people continuously informed. I think that's a big part of it. Consistency. Gives, yeah. Consistency, consistency yeah. is everything. Um, you know, even when you, you allow a platform for people to know that anytime they go to it, you will be there for them. Yeah, sure. That's huge, right? Yeah, you yeah. know, that anytime, like, oh, their site's down. Oh, their content is old. Oh, the, that's that's a game. You're, you're, it kills your quality of right. your of your company or yeah. your brand. Yeah. And so by having that consistency every day, knowing that anytime they go to us, you're going to see some new content. Yeah. You're going to see something busy. Even yeah. these podcasts are allowing them to see. Hey, there's always something new that right. they can teach. So yeah. that's really huge. So yeah. Derek, thank you for that question. I hope that was helpful with that answer. Um, this just a little bit again talking about our history, talking about you know. Thank you for letting us share with that because this is huge to be able to show where we have gone, and hopefully that's again to encouragement to you guys that you don't need to wait for the latest and greatest. You yeah. want to grow into it. You will eventually get there. We have full confidence that you will get there, but that comes with experience. Sure, and you need to have that experience with those cameras early before you can get into the bigger brands right, right? so right. anyway um thank you guys for joining us i think that was a really good concept um super excited about some of the new people that are coming in we still have some more people exciting that we're going to be having in we still have uh gina yeah. Uh, Gannett coming in here. We right. have Bobby Duran who's going to be coming in here. We've yeah. got, oh man, we've got um, all the downrange project that we're going to be coming in. So stay tuned on those. That's going to be exciting. So we are just super pumped that you guys are just again being here. And don't forget, we want to just encourage you guys about the product. We do have Brink product. If you guys have not known, go pick up a sweater, go pick up a shirt, hats, socks, all of the branding. Um, help us support some of our non uh, profit organizations that yeah. we believe in. Help us be able to take on some of those projects that we are doing that you don't sometimes see that we're trying to get out more help us do that support us so we can help support them go out in there and buy it at brinkbaby.com check it out and uh thanks for staying you know being with us again and we'll see you guys on another episode of the stay focused podcast um get out there and get in shooting right yeah shoot and we'll yes. see you guys next time let's go now turn it up oh. yeah Get the job, so girl, make money here. Yeah. 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 Y